clematis are one of the most glorious garden climbers with colours available to suit virtually any colour scheme and new varieties being introduced almost every year. They're so versatile and I plant many of mine where they can scramble naturally like clematis fireworks that I've planted among my low growing rhododendrons in an ericaceous bed along with oolala that spreads over my camellia to add summer flowers when the plant it's using for support has finished blooming. And this bright blue variety of clematis planted at the base of my Japanese maple. So the shoots venture up into the branches to layer on some summer colour. There are dwarf varieties like the Boulevard series that are perfect in large patio pots. And I've planted Cezanne so that it can be left to tumble over the edges of the pot without a support. Or there are compact varieties like the Countess of Wessex that grow well in bold pots with a short support frame in place onto which the stems can cling and scramble up to display their summer flowers in all their glory. Overall, clematis are pretty easy to grow, but with so many different types available that flower at different times of year, pruning can be confusing. As I sometimes say, one of the best ways to learn is to watch someone doing the job. So I hope this video will clear up some confusion and give you the confidence to prune your clematis. I'll try to dispel some of the mystery and show you how I prune the clematis growing in my garden. I don't grow every type, but coming up, I'll show you how I prune my summer blooming large flower clematis. Then the non-climbing types like Arabella, followed by the later flowering clematis viticella varieties like Etoile Rose with its dainty hanging pink flowers and the flamboyant simplicity of the four petaled Madame Julia Coravon. And finally, I'll describe how to prune the bold and bountiful Clematis Montana, along with a gallery of some of its most popular varieties, plus tips on pruning two other spring flowering types, the dainty Clematis Alpina and the equally early flowering Clematis Macropetala. So let's start with the large summer flowering hybrids like the deep blue Kingfisher, the beautiful pure white alabast that I grow up one of my garden arches alongside a golden leaf jasmine called Fiona Sunrise and the impressive double flowered multi blue or the unusual crystal fountain bold brush in its centre giving it an exotic feel. One of my favourite clematis is Dr. Rupal which I've planted at the base of a pear tree and train it up into the branches to layer on some extra colour through the summer. Now if I leave this growth of Dr. Rupal you can see already at the end of winter I've got new shoots, these green shoots developing high up but if I leave this unpruned the clematis is just going to get taller and taller, very leggy, flowers at the top and nothing at the bottom. What you've got to do with summer flowering clematis is to follow these shoots down which developed last year. Although they've got shoots on them I'm going to have to prune these away because I want to follow them down, low down, really as low down on the plant as you can to where there are some green shoots or some buds growing at the bottom. So really any time through winter up until the end of February it's a good time to check these clematis and see where you can prune them down to. So all of this top growth can come away. If I leave this in place, the plant will get very leggy. So start by just removing as much of this leggy top growth as you can, which is grown right up into the branches of my pear tree. So get rid of all of this, cut it down completely. And then once you've cleared the decks, we can actually work out where we can prune down to. So now with a lot of the top growth cut away, just follow those stems down and just find where there's some buds growing out from the shoot and prune above those. Remove all the top growth and cut down some, some low buds. They could be two foot from soil level, a foot from soil level or even lower down, but just follow all of that growth down and cut just above where there's some new green buds developing. So like here on the clematis, Growth is coming up and a couple of foot from soil level. I've got the old stem that grew last year 
these lovely new fat buds so I can trim away the old growth just above there cut that away and these buds will grow out this year and they will give me the shoots which will carry flowers later this summer so you don't have to be too precise but here we are down at ground level for the stems up and as soon as you find some low buds try and cut down to the buds as low down on the plant as possible any of these low buds will be great it means that the new growth will be coming out from the base and growing up into the branches of my pear tree Clematis arabella is a non-climbing clematis so you'll need to give some support to you could just grow it in a board and let it clamber over the other plants I put this metal obelisk support in here and what I want to do is to encourage new growth from the bottom not high up so I can already see high up on these old stems some green shoots starting to form so even in winter I think it's time to literally give this quite a good cut down cutting it down to you know, maybe 10 inches a foot from soil level sometimes even more what I don't want is all of this new growth to stay in place and get new shoots developing higher up otherwise the plant will take off and get into my neighbor's garden so I'm going to cut all of this away because I want the new shoots to develop low down on the stems to grow up this support through the growing season and then put a good flowering display onto this obelisk to enjoy through the summer so now is the time to cut away all of this growth to avoid it wasting energy forming shoots higher up my clematis viticella etoile rose flowers around about july onwards it's a slightly later flowering smaller flowered clematis it's grown up and it's grown behind the hydrangea just training itself into the holly hedge beyond and the easy way to prune all of these clematis viticellas is simple you cut them off at ground level all of this growth grew up last year from the bottom all of it is cut away now and you can do that anytime during winter new growth will come up from the base in the spring and this will gradually twine its way through i just push it into the support so that it clings on to the holly at the back and lays on some extra color through the year so all i'm going to do now is to cut it off chop it away right down at the bottom just a inch or so from soil level is absolutely fine and now all of this growth can be taken away because none of this will carry flowers this year all of this can come away it's all dead and once the new shoots come up in the spring I'll train those into place so if the shoots are just growing out and they're falling into the flower border just very gently push it back and aim it in the direction you want don't bend clematis shoots too much or they will snap so just very gently tease them in so the shoots will grab on and get their support and this will gradually climb up here and clad the holly with an extra layer of flowers I really hope you're enjoying this video and if you are please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel thank you in addition to its bountiful spring flowering displays one of the joys of clematis montana and its many varieties is its rapid rate of growth and its robust nature which allows it to scramble up and over fences sheds arches up into trees and covers eyesores if space is not limited clematis montana can be left to ramble naturally to its heart's content with little care and attention from you at all the downside to this exuberance is that if you haven't carefully selected a planting site that will benefit from a plant on such a mission you may find it stifling neighboring plants and getting rather overgrown whatever the reason at some stage in its life clematis montana will probably need to be pruned and the time to do this is immediately after its spring flowering display is over 
prune earlier or in winter as you would for summer flowering clematis and you'll be cutting away the shoots that will be carrying spring flowers. So wait until the last flowers have faded before pruning. There are no hard and fast rules when pruning this clematis. Very old or overgrown plants of Clematis montana may have outgrown their position with quite woody and bare stems at the base, carrying flowers far away on their leafy green shoots. These can be tamed by pruning hard back to their base or just trim back a few of the stems, smothering other plants. Very thick old woody stems can be cut down with loppers or even a pruning saw. It can take a season or two for plants to fully recover from such hard pruning, but this drastic pruning can really rejuvenate an old clematis. After pruning, keep well watered, give the plant a good drench with liquid feed, and new shoots will soon be breaking out from the old wood at the base. Either let the new growth scramble naturally, or tie in gently to its support during the summer, but take care as these shoots can be very fragile they'll snap if you try and bend them too far. Other spring flowering clematis, such as Clematis alpina, or the Clematis macropetala, can also be pruned once they're finished flowering to control excessive growth, shortening all the flowered shoots back to about a foot or so, 25 centimeters from their base. Where space is very limited, then Clematis montana can be given an annual prune after flowering. That can be very beneficial, pruning back any stems that carried flowers to a strong pair of buds near the base of the stem framework. Don't delay pruning for too long, trying to complete it before mid-June, as the aim is to stimulate buds low down on the stems to develop over the coming months, which will carry flowers next spring. There are numerous varieties of Clematis montana, but do check out a recent introduction called Sunrise, that's claimed to be a little bit more compact than others, so possibly better for a small garden. It produces double flowers in dusky pink, and new leaves develop with a chocolate purple flush to them before turning fully green. I do hope you're enjoying this video, and if you are, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking the button below. There's plenty more inspiring videos on my channel, Adam's Gardening Guides. Thank you.